Good evening, YouTubers. David Artis back here again with your Astros recap live from Galveston. In fact, <clears throat> I'm doing this podcast from inside my car tonight. Was going to do it out on the balcony of my hotel room, but um, it is 9.50 currently. By the way, July 21st, 2019. But the reason I actually didn't want to do this from my balcony was because if there are people out uh, trying to sleep, if I have to raise my voice for certain things, <laughs> I just thought my car here with the air going and be a better place. Kind of crammed here now as I speak, but um, I'm going to make this work here. So anyway, Ashes did very well this week. They went 5-2, and two, so whenever they have a full week of games, all seven here this week, Usually five and two is what you are going to shoot for. I mean, you would ask for a four and two if you had a three and three uh, type series thing. <laughs> but anyway, five and two, very satisfied with. Not the conventional way you'd usually expect taking three or four in one of the series and two or three of the next, but they actually split with the Angels 2-2, two, two, and then they swept the Rangers. Nothing joys me more than sweeping the Rangers. Uh, I say every week that I don't like to go game by game, just a full week recap. You know, I, I sort of take into some... I have to talk about some of the games just because, you know, when I'm giving a recap of the players and where everybody's sort of at, you know, you have to talk about the games they either performed or didn't. And so... But anyway, so, like I said, they split with the Angels. The Astros, I, you know, talked about this last week, having big issues. Um, your four and five spots in the rotation, which is really one and five. If you think about the All-Star break, you know, starting with Framber Valdez, and then having Cole Miley Verlander, and then the fifth spot sort of up in the air. But that was a big issue. These first two games in Anaheim, Los Angeles, whatever you want to call it here, playing the Angels, of course, for the first time ever. Um, there was a game last year where they actually did the opener. Uh, it was like Brad Peacock and then Valdez came in to throw about four or five innings. But for the first time this year, they actually used an opener. So they, on Monday, you know, just trying to figure out a way to get innings, have somebody. So, you know, we're not usually a big fan of going opener and then primary pitcher, which some teams do. We're just not interested in really doing that. I mean, that could kill your bullpen big time. And we paid the price because if your opener can't get through the first inning, then you're in trouble. And that actually happened Tuesday on Monday. There's Josh James who pitched as the opener, and he had a good first inning. And then Valdez came in and did his usual uh, Frommer Valdez things, giving up. Yeah, let's see. Got my phone pulled up here, so this shouldn't be too tough. Try to go back here to Monday. We did lose this game 9-6, to six, and we had a 3 nothing lead early, which looked good. But Valdez gave up one in the third, two in the fourth, and then four more in the fifth. So his line, after Valdez pitched a scoreless first, he went four innings, Valdez, so got him through five, but gave up seven runs. Four were earned. He walked four, struck out four. He got sent back down to triple after this game rightfully so he shouldn't have even had a chance to pitch this game at any point just period point blank I mean he was terrible Joe Smith did come in got an inning and then McHugh actually finished it off pitching the last two so it didn't kill your bullpen but Framber Valdez put us in a tough spot uh, we could I mean you know, Springer had a few home runs he had two Springer's been heating up a little bit lately here but um yeah it just kind of sucks to be up 3-0 early in the game and you still couldn't couldn't hold them down so you lose that 9-6 to and it's the same story the next game so you're 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 five and one spots in the rotation of the two that nobody seems to want to take advantage of and we'll get to that because they actually did perform these last two games but Tuesday they lose 7-2 to they actually started the opener for this game was Hector Rondon and you know, I actually didn't disagree with using this or d doing this or using Rondon in this situation just because hopefully if he can pitch the first, even if he gives up one or two runs, that takes him out of the equation for, you know, using him later in games when he usually blows it. So I wasn't opposed to it. 
but I didn't expect him to give up six runs, which is what he did in the first, which put us out of the game that quickly. And they just never really put anything together together offensively. In fact, we've seen this uh, throughout the season. I mean, they're, they're a good team, but some of their losses are really ugly. I don't know if that's a cause for concern. I don't really think it is. I mean, when you give up a lot of runs in the early innings, that kind of takes the wind of the offense a little bit. I mean, the Astros have always seemed to be a team that is going to play all 27 outs, and the offense usually will continue to score, no matter what the outcome is going to be or anything like that. But they really just couldn't get anything going. There wasn't a lot of scoring. Yet. The final was 7-2, to two, so they did give up one run, but Rondon really blew it. He only went two-thirds. See, that's the thing. When you use the opener, if your opener, who's only pitching the first inning, can't get out of it, you're you're kind of in a bind because now you have to figure out a way to align your bullpen. I mean, usually your primary pitcher will come in the second, and then you expect him to go two through, you know, pitch four or five innings. But, you know, if your opener can't, you know, at least get you through the first inning, it, it, you're sort of in a tough spot, just my personal opinion. But he couldn't get out of the first, so you know, he only got two outs. All six runs he gave up were earned. Blew uh, ERA all the way up to 4.79. He had an ERA sort of in the threes for most of the year, which isn't terrible. But, you know, I've, I've talked about this in the past. When you use Rondon, it's not that he's usually giving up a ton of runs. It's just when you use him in tight games and he's giving up one or two or whatever it is, I mean, it makes the game either that much closer. It, you know, makes a game that you're ahead a tie or, it, you know, you give up the lead. So that's the issue I had with Rondon. I didn't expect him to give up six runs. If you give up one or two in the first, I don't really care because I you got 27 or 24 outs to play to get those runs back. So, yeah, but Rondon... Uh, has proven himself out of a spot. I think uh, A.J. Hinch is actually finally starting to catch on. Uh, Bedivo got him out of the first and also p- pitched the second there, so he was scoreless um, in his inning in the third. And then Armenteros went four innings, and he was actually extremely good. He only gave up one run. It wasn't even earned. Struck out three, walked one. So Armenteros did the job as the primary pitcher in game two. So it was kind of... Uh, Opposites when you think about these two games. I mean, they lost them both, but the opener did their job in the first game, and it was the primary pitcher that didn't. In the second game, the opener didn't do his job, the primary pitcher did. So it was just, you know, the whole opener thing, it's something that the Tampa Bay Rays started last year. Teams kind of followed in their footsteps, and a lot of teams do it if they don't feel like they have, you know, most teams aren't going to have five great starting pitchers. It just, it's not going to work. So a lot of teams that have good bullpens, I mean, they'll usually decide one guy to actually pitch two through five or six. Usually you try to get four or five innings out of your primary pitcher. But the Astros were never a team that was really interested in doing that. Did it once last year and then these two games here. And after watching them lose the second game, I remember – thinking to myself, I was like, there's there's no way that Jeff Luna can be watching these games and thinking, you know, I, we're just going to figure this out and we'll get back to this spot in the rotation, th- these two spots again, and we'll figure it out. And <laughs> I just, I couldn't imagine that actually happening. That's all of the bad. One more thing I do want to add in Tuesday's game, they actually did throw at Jake Marisnik, so they sort of retaliated, which I have expected. So he took his base and he, you know, didn't even look out. He just ran down the first. Well, I mean, he probably was half expecting it himself, but that's what happened there. And then, you know, Lance McCullough, the pitch was a little high, you know. He got hit, you know, right on the M and the A, the back of the jersey. In fact, if he didn't move, it was actually headed towards his head a little bit. So, I mean, it was a little high, I guess. McCullers and Verlander were yelling at the Angels afterwards, so benches sort of cleared. Nothing was really going to happen, just... But that's the end of it. You know, even Marisnik handled it with a lot of class. In fact, when the Astros were starting to get out of the dugout, he was pushing them all back, saying just Marisnik more than anybody just wants this to be over, and I think it finally is. In fact, after that game, Osmus, Brad Osmus, the manager of the Angels, got suspended the game, and no, I don't even know his first name, Ramirez, pitcher for the Angels, 
he got suspended three. So Major League Baseball took care of that. It's over, done with, I think. That whole thing with the whole Marisna collision, and I think it's all over and done with, so that's good. I wanted to add that in there just because we were sort of half expecting that, playing the Angels right after and with the thing that happened with Luke Roy and all that. That's all the bad I can talk about this week. So they won the next five. So, you know, you had your pitchers set up. Uh, Cole was great in the third game. So, yeah, I just lost it here. So, let's see here. We win Wednesday 11-2. to two. Cole, um, 11 strikeouts. He went six, seven innings. Let's see here. Went seven innings. Gave up seven hits, walked one, struck out 11. ERA down to 3.12. That's basically what Cole's been doing. Joe Smith pitched a scoreless inning and Ryan Presley pitched the ninth, striking at the side, also allowing a run and walking a batter. But, yeah, that was that was a much-needed <clears throat> no-stress 11-2 to pounding right there. And you expect that with Cole out there. Cole uh, right on the heels of Justin Verlander about to catch him in ERA, and he's only one back in the win column as well. I just, you know, Cole's pitching with something to prove, um, contract year for him. I'm trying to get his actual numbers here. So with the win, he's now 10-5, and five, so I expect that the win total to go up and the ERA to continue to go down. And then we won on Thursday. This is uh, Wade Miley. Who got the win? I want to say they won it six to two. Um, let's see here, Miley went only five and a third. He gave up two runs. One was earned. Struck out three. Walked two. He's been very consistent though. That's. I mean, he usually will get you through six innings, three runs le- three runs or less. Quality starts most of the year. He's only had maybe two or three where he's actually given up more than three runs. So uh, he's been everything we could have hoped for and then some when we you know signed him in the off season there 3.25 ERA he's 8 and 4 and then Harris went two thirds McHugh got an inning Presley Osuna all pitch they really needed work it wasn't really that close but Presley and Osuna and Harris all got in that game which was good Harris got an ERA at 1.82 Presley at 1.45 and as soon as had a scoreless inning, he actually struck out the side, gave it the hit. So, you know, Will Harris is a guy that scared me a little bit lately. Osuna hasn't been as dominant as you would have hoped. But, yeah, they need to work more than anything. I feel like there's been a lot of times during the year where it's like, you know, Osuna will save a game and then he gets like four or five days off because we're either getting killed or we're winning big. So, Anyway, winning those last two games was big to split the series, especially after losing the first two. So coming out of the All-Star break, splitting with Texas and um, Los Angeles there was big, especially considering losing. You you lost the first two games of both those series. To come back and split those games was pretty big. And then, like I said earlier, nothing brings me more joy than when you sweep the Texas Rangers, which is what they did over the weekend and you really were thinking Friday you got Verlander and then Saturday and Sunday is going to be a mess because you have to deal with this whole if they choose to do the opener which didn't work the first time I don't know why you do it again but you got to figure out what you're going to do so Frymer Valdez was the one who got sent down and we were thinking Cy Sneed was going to get a chance I want to talk about Friday first because Verlander pitched this game so you're expecting a lot of solo home runs. And, I mean, he went five scoreless, and then in the sixth he gave up home runs to both uh, Rudin Odor and Isdrubal Cabrera. Team had scored four runs prior to that. That was Gurriel, home run in the second. They went back to back to back in the third with Altuve, Alex Bregman, and Jordan Alvarez. So we were up 4 nothing early. You know, we kind of wiggled out of trouble both in the 6th and 7th and 8th innings. Yeah, Asuna did get the uh, save there. Verlander got the win, so he's 12-4. and four, ERA at 2.99. So hanging on, barely under 3 there. But, um, 
yeah, I mean, we just scored four runs, all solo home runs. Harris did get the hold. Uh, he worked himself. He gave up a run. It was actually unearned. He struck out a batter, walked one. ERA at 1.77. Josh James, who I think should get a lot more uh, chances in late inning rolls, um, pitched an inning, struck out two, walked a batter. And then Osuna, uh, like the only one, two, three inning of the entire game for the Astros was that ninth inning. Didn't strike anybody out, but he got the outs, so got his 21st save on the year. So that was a good win. Saturday, 6-1, to one, so no real um, issue here. The big question was, who are you going to use? Because, I mean, you're not using an opener, and Valdez is back in AAA. So what they did after Friday's game, finally, long-awaited, way overdue, Tyler White was DFA'd designated for assignment. So he basically has seven days to either release him, trade him, or if he clears waivers, which he could or could not do, I don't know if a team will take a chance on him, but he'll actually go back into our minor league organization if nothing happens, if he clears waivers. I think a team would actually take a chance on him, so we'll just have to wait and see. Have to wait until Friday to actually get the word there, but the reason they sent him down is so they could bring up Jose, your Kitty. That's how you say that name. I used to say your 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 Quitty, but it's your Kitty, I think, is how they're pronouncing that. So, who's had two starts this year? Both of them very not real good. One was in one was in Colorado, which is a tough place to pitch, and then the second one was against the Angels at home, where he really stuck up the joint. But he was fantastic in this game. And we got two early runs. Guriel once again hit a three-run home run. Tony Kemp had one. And they scored their first two on uh, RBI doubles. But Guriel is still hitting home runs left and right. So that's good to see. But your Quiddy is the big story. Or like your your Keedy is the big story in this game. He went seven innings, gave it two hits. One run it was earned. Struck out nine. So he's earned himself another chance to start a game. And getting through seven really saved the bullpen. Davinsky and Rondon actually got into the ninth and pitched a one, two, three inning. But when you're up six runs at that point, or five runs, that's the time to use them. So whether you're up big or down big, but he has to figure out a way to get himself back. I don't want to see him in any close games, but it was good to at least him get get back in there and actually you know toss a one, two, three inning. Devo is a guy that's actually done well. We've had to use him probably more than we would like to, but he's actually done a lot better. I feel like he hasn't given up a lot of runs lately. And, you know, not having a lefty in the bullpen, he's the guy that AJ will call on to get lefties out because his numbers are good in that regard. So you win that 7-1. to Today I actually missed most of the game. I did keep tabs on it. I know Brantley hit two home runs. Altuve hit one. So Brantley's up to 15. Altuve got his 14th. Brantley had a two-run, two-run homer in the first. Yeah, they scored two more in the fifth. I know Alvarez had an RBI. Altuve had a home run. I think Brantley had a second in the eighth. They went at five to three. But Armenteros got the star. He earned that with the primary pitching role he had on Tuesday, and he was also extremely good. Five innings, two hits, one run. It was earned. Six strikeouts, two walks, and then James. Interesting story. I, you know, I didn't watch a lot of this game, so it was kind of hard, but they brought him out after getting two outs. Apparently his velocity, you know, he's usually up in the upper 90s, even reaching 100 quite often, but in this game he actually it dropped off to like 91, 89. I don't know what happened, but they took him out. I think it's precautionary. I haven't heard any news on him, of course. You know, I'm in Galveston. I was out most of the day today doing strand stuff and walking the beach, eating dinner. So I wasn't really – we did stop at a bar where I was watching a little bit of it. And then I saw that on Twitter. So I don't know what the deal with Josh James is. We'll just kind of have to wait and see there. And then they brought in – McHugh got the final out and pitched all of the seventh. And then Harris and Osuna, it being a three-run game, Harris, you know – been very shaky lately not necessarily getting a ton of runs but definitely putting runners on base which is what he did here but he worked out of it getting a big strike out of 
I want to say it was Joey Gallo, maybe. Or no more Mazzara. Not exactly sure, but he did get himself out of it. And then Osuna, who did give up a home run to Logan for Forsyth, but that was only the third run. So we did win that game. 5-3. to three, Finished off the sweep there in five and two weeks. So that's kind of... I know I kind of went game by game there, but it's kind of weird. So, you know, your, your KD is going to get another start, I fully expect, and Armenteros. I mean, you have both... Guriel, not Guriel, but Adiaz should be back at some point during this Oakland series. And if all goes plans, so you play Oakland for three off day Thursday, and then you'll go to St. Louis for three. And Correa, is, as if everything goes as planned, he should be back Friday. And then Diaz, one of these games against Oakland. And what it's probably going to be when it comes to roster transactions there, um, you know, they're not going to. Send you can't send down Kemp or Mariznick. Yeah, you're not going to send down Mariznick, of course, and, and and Tony Kemp is out of minor league options. So is Jake Mariznick. So Miles Straw is going to be the odd man out. Unfortunately, that's what's going to happen. And then they'll probably send down a pitcher. You know, I don't know necessarily who, but they have like eight pitchers right now. So that's kind of ex excessive. Of course, with the four and five starters or one and five, if you want me to be technical here, it's tough to, you know, you, you need more bullpen pitchers as things stand right now. But anyway, so that's what it looks like. When I talk to you next Sunday, I will be back at home into my regular spot. But uh, we should have three games with Correa, and we'll see Diaz a little bit and talk about those corresponding uh, roster moves. But, yeah, it's probably going to be Miles Straw, and I'd probably say, I mean, Rogelio Armenteros, I mean, you need a starter. They might bring back up Cy Sneed because we'll, we'll be allowed to do that. He had to be sent down for, what, 10 days, or else he probably would have gotten the start of one of these two games, whether it's Saturday or Sunday. So we'll see. I think he deserves to be up here. So we'll just see how things shake out. I, I can't give you a confirmation on really anything, just my thoughts. But anyway, so wrap things up there. Tyler White, that thing is finally completely over. In fact, I hope somebody picks him up. That way he's not allowed back in our organization. No disrespect, but his time was long overdue. We knew that things were going to happen. So Anyway, coming up on 22, almost 23 minutes here. So quick standings update Oakland breathing down our necks got the uh, like cut the lead all the way to four and a half it's now back up to six and a half Astros are 64 and 37 winners of five in a row so feeling good um, and this next series is, is big I mean we've played Oakland well it seems like every time we we've swept them twice this year and then split a two game set so we're like seven and one against them this year and Every time we feel like they're dead and buried, uh, you give it two weeks and they're right back up there. So this is kind of like last year's story. I expected them to give us not necessarily a run for our money, but I thought that they would be the second-place team battling for a wild card, which is what they're doing. L.A.'s fallen. Well, L.A. actually, Texas, the team that's really fall, uh, has fallen here. They're 50 and 49. In fact, this was a big series for them, I was thinking to myself, because... You know, they've been sort of in the hunt. They've had that second wild card spot at different points. But, yeah, they might be sellers here if they can't figure things out and reel off some wins here. So we'll wait and see. But the Angels are actually getting ahead of them. So it goes Astros, of course, six-and-a-half game lead. And then you got the A's. You have L.A. It's a big drop-off because they go from six-and-a-half back to 12 back. And then... The Texas Rangers at 13 back. And then the Mariners, huge drop off, 24 and a half games back. They're a complete disaster. I expected them to be pretty bad after shipping off Robinson Cano and their all star closer, Edwin Diaz. The Yankees still finally lost a game today, 64 and 34. So they have a game and a half lead on us. Minnesota lost a few games over the weekend. They did win today, they're 60 and 38. So we have a two-and-a-half game lead. Of 
course, they got to play a few more games. Like, we played three more than them. Yeah, it sounds right, three more. So the Yankees are really the team in the American League as it stands now, 30 games over 500. We are 20, what is that, 27 games over 500? Yeah, we're game game and a half back, so that sounds right. But, yeah, I mean, this is their high watermark. They were 25 at one point before, you know, having going on their little losing streak, the Astros, that is. Uh, but coming back and now just got to keep winning games, so hopefully they can at least take two or three with Oakland and then go to St. Louis and hopefully, hopefully take two or three there as well. So wrap things up there. Quick standings update for you. And, yeah, so, I mean, we're coming up on 25 minutes. Got one more day here in Galveston. I'll be driving back tomorrow evening, so I'll be able to watch all the games next week. And we'll uh, wrap things up there, and I'll talk to you then. Uh, Also, before I actually finish up, please subscribe if you want to hear more Astros talk. I'll be bringing on more guests as the season progresses. Maybe Keegan will join me. Talked about it. Uh, when I was at work just on Saturday he talked about joining me of course I told him I was going to Galveston so that was that picture there but hopefully you know he can uh, join me either next week also another co-worker of mine Kobe um, who you know, I have to get great baseball minds that can keep up with me and Kobe is just like me when it comes to watching all these games in fact he works all of them so yeah, I want to bring on guests, but please like it, subscribe it, share it with your friends, do all that good stuff. Also, leave the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you think I'm wrong, uh, any feedback, I'm always open to criticism, whatever it is. But yeah, share it with your friends, and let's get the word out. And if you're a fan of Astros baseball, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But we'll wrap things up there, and I'll talk to you next week here on Astros Recap.